Good day ladies and gentlemen and uh, thank you for watching our video today. You're looking at the uh, newest member of the uh, Airbus family, the uh, Airbus A320neo version. Uh, this aircraft uh, has a passenger capacity of 165 to 195 passengers depending on uh, whether you have a two class system or just one big class. Uh, the aircraft is uh, 123 feet 3 inches long, has a wingspan of 117 feet 5 inches, and the height is 38 feet 7 inches. The cabin width, or fuselage, is 12 feet 1 inch w wide, and the aircraft weighs in at 93,000 pounds. Its maximum takeoff weight is 174,200 pounds and its fuel capacity is 7,060 uh, US gallons or 26,700 I'm sorry 26,730 liters the engines on this aircraft are the uh, new uh, CFM Leap 1A26 engines which produce uh, a thrust of, uh, during takeoff, 27,120 uh, pound-feet and uh, continuous thrust of 26,680 pound-feet. The cruising speed is uh, Mach 0.78 and it has a maximum altitude of uh, 39,100 up to uh, as high as 41,000 feet depending on uh, the amount of uh, weight and uh, weather conditions as well. So, uh, as you can see, this is uh, a very economical um, city hopper, basically uh, used for uh, transport between uh, larger metropolitan cities, um, commuter aircraft, that type of thing. Um, this one here is owned by Lufthansa. And uh, it's a very economical airplane to operate um, due, in fact, to the new engines, which are very fuel, fuel efficient. The aircraft has a range of uh, in the vicinity of about uh, 3,700 nautical miles. Of course, you'd never fly right up to 3,700 nautical miles, obviously, because you have to uh, leave room for descent and landing. We're going to fly today. Uh, we'll, go, we'll be taking off from uh, Athens, Greece, and our flight plan is to land in uh, Rome, Italy. And we'll be flying at a nominal altitude of uh, 26,000 feet. And depending on weather conditions, uh, we might get up a little higher than that. We'll play it by ear. But uh, our initial plan is 26,000 feet. And we'll be cruising at Mach 0.78 unless weather conditions dictate otherwise. As you can see, the aircraft is equipped with the uh, sharklets on the wingtips. Uh, which adds even more fuel savings by eliminating the uh, vortices that get created on the ends of the wingtips, uh, which uh, basically render that part of the uh, wing useless as far as lift goes if uh, you didn't have those uh, sharklets. You basically end up by having the sharklets uh, have a, a longer wing Uh, without making them actually longer. I know that doesn't make sense, but um, another way to put it would be to the aircraft thinks the wings are longer than they actually are. I guess is a better way to put it. Anyway, let's uh, hop in board the cockpit here and we'll get ready to go. And uh, I'll uh, be doing some commentary along the way. And 
you can post any comments you have. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll uh, try to answer them as best as I can. Hope you enjoy the video. And let's jump in the cockpit and let's get started. Okay, so here we are inside the cockpit of the A320. Uh, before we get started here, I just want to give you a virtual tour of the inside of the aircraft. Um, the cockpit dash is not my work. It's a, a modification of uh, Ken Mitchell's panel with uh, LCD display. Uh, I did make a couple of modifications here. There's a ground proximity warning system right here that I've added. Uh, there's a pushback gauge for pushing back away from uh, t terminals if you're parked right at a terminal uh, door. And there's a uh, traffic collision avoidance system radar. Allows you to see uh, other aircraft in the air. Uh, the internal views, looking forward right and uh, right and rear right. These views are my work. I've created those myself as... Uh, did I create the uh, the internal view of the cabin itself? I've also created this view, which is the uh, if you were sitting as a passenger, the view of the seat in front of you, with the uh, video display showing the uh, view that you would get from the captain's seat. So with that being said, uh, we're going to get this show on the road and get the aircraft started up and then we'll uh, taxi to the runway. Just one note here uh, before I uh, start the APU. Um, the software I use to record these videos uh, records the uh, sound directly from the uh, computer, but it also picks up the uh, engines from the uh, microphone that I use for narr narrating the video. So uh, as a result, it kind of creates a, a cancellation effect and uh, kind of makes the engines sound like they're underwater is the best way I can describe it so if you hear that weird distortion in the engine sounds it's uh, basically a, a loop back from the microphone I'm using just gonna start the APU here and uh, this panel here is the uh, console that resides between the pilot and co-pilot in the actual aircraft. Okay, so we've got the uh, system up and running. We're going to go ahead with uh, getting uh, clearance for takeoff and uh, ground clearance to the runway. Let's set the altimeter, the uh, outside of Barometric pressure is 29.81 inches of mercury. We use that below 18,000 feet to uh, measure the altitude. Now that's Serios, Venezuela, Slaris delivery, lift on set 6801, ready to copy IFR clearance to see you meet. Lift on set 6801 is clear to see you meet airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 10,000. Departure frequency is 118.475, squawk 4701. Lift on set 6801, clear to see you meet airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 10,000. Departure on 118.475, squawk 4701. Lufthansa 6801, read back correct, contact ground 
Okay, so we got our uh, clearance for takeoff. Uh, we'll be landing at uh, Fiume Airport in uh, Rome, Italy. Uh, cruising altitude today will be 26,000 feet. Initial climb to uh, 10,000 feet. Of course, under 10,000 feet, uh, we keep the airspeed under 250 knots. And uh, we're just doing a pushback here so that I can. Uh, get onto the taxiway. Typically when we're taxiing uh, to the runway, we try to keep it around uh, 15 to 18 knots. Uh, if we get a stretch where there's no turns, uh, we can go as high as 25 knots if necessary, but uh, generally speaking it's uh, between 15 and 18 knots. One thing you may notice in uh, some aircraft, this one included, uh, the pilot and co-pilot are sitting in front of the nose wheel or, or ahead of the nose wheel if you will. So uh, at times, depending on the airport and the size of the taxiways, uh, it can actually look like um, you're going off the taxiway onto the grass. Uh, it's an optical illusion. Basically, the nose of the airplane is uh, going out over the grass, but uh, the nose wheel itself is staying on the concrete. We got a full load of fuel today at uh, 35,000 pounds, give or take. And we'll be taking off at uh, maximum takeoff weight. I've written the flight dynamics for this aircraft. The model itself is by Project Airbus. And uh, somebody else did the. Uh, external livery paint job but the specifications uh, I've updated myself uh, taking into consideration the uh, empty weight of the aircraft uh, the amount of fuel it carries the weight of that fuel uh, the amount of thrust in the engines the uh, center of gravity etc any factor that would uh, have an impact on the uh, fl flight characteristics of the airplane are uh, exactly as published by Airbus. Having flown this plane before, I can tell you that uh, it's very close to uh, the uh, published specifications. The aircraft has a range of around uh, 3,700 nautical miles and uh, it uh, it's pretty close. Of course, nobody would ever fly an aircraft 
out to its maximum range obviously you need uh, room for descent and landing so uh, although they give you a published maximum range nobody would ever fly that maximum distance So we got our uh, permission to pull out onto the runway, basically, but uh, we got to hold there until uh, another aircraft gets uh, off the ground and on upwind. There's a 737 taking off ahead of us there. You can see him on, in the distance there, climbing. Contact the Lost departure on 118.4 Southern Okay, so just doing our pre-takeoff checklist here. We have our landing lights on, seatbelts on, and on, no smoking sign. The icers are on. Uh, autopilot is set. Indicated airspeed is set. And uh, bar barometric pressure is currently uh, 29.81 inches of mercury. Of course, we use barometric pressure to measure the altitude below 18,000 feet. So let's get going. I hope you enjoy the video. Enjoy the ride. Okay, so we're just making a left-hand turn here to uh, get onto our flight plan. This is a very forgiving airplane in terms of uh, fuel, but uh, almost lifts itself off the runway without any input from you. We're currently climbing at 1,500 feet per minute. 
and uh, once I get uh, leveled out and on our flight plan get the flaps all the way up we'll be increasing our climb rate uh, one thing about the A320 it's uh, thrust to weight ratio is very good so it uh, has no trouble climbing even at maximum takeoff weight The aircraft is capable of getting up to 32 to 35,000 feet, but uh, you wouldn't be able to do that all in one single climb at maximum takeoff weight. You would have to uh, level out at some point and uh, gain some airspeed and then uh, climb again. In the aviation world, that's known as step climbing. So you can see the airport uh, to our left here. We basically uh, took off and uh, made a 180 degree turn. And we're currently heading in the opposite direction to uh, the direction we took off from. And you can see the uh, city of Athens off to our right. Very beautiful scenery in this part of the world. There is a uh, the uh, Mount Olympus. If we were a little bit closer, uh, you'd be able to see the uh, ruins of uh, Mount Olympus. But uh, unfortunately, it'll be a little bit difficult to see from this distance. You might be able to see some uh, small yachts and sailboats down below us there. Uh, obviously Athens is a very popular tourist destination in the Mediterranean. It has a subtropical climate. Some very nice uh, swimming and scuba diving in the area. As well as its uh, cultural history. Known as the uh, birthplace of democracy.
Okay, so we're over 10,000 feet here, so uh, we're going to turn off the landing lights and uh, increase our for forward speed, airspeed to uh, 315 knots on the autopilot. Currently, as we speak, we're, we have an indicated airspeed of 245 knots. Climbing to uh, 11,000 feet. Winds are uh, 355 degrees at 9 knots, which is very favorable for flight. Very nice day for flight. hard to see why this is such a popular tourist destination. There's so many places here to see and warm tropical waters of the Mediterranean make for some excellent scuba diving. And of course you have your cultural history as well. A lot of artifacts to be found in the Mediterranean. So we're going to continue to climb at 1,800 feet per minute. Uh, so I do see the uh, airspeed dropping across that back of it. I don't think it'll be an issue with this aircraft. It has a very good thrust to weight ratio. So it climbs to cruising altitude pretty good without any problems. Okay, so we're on our uh, final climb here up to 26,000 feet. Currently at uh, 16,500 feet. Indicated airspeed 306 knots, ground speed 373 knots. Wind is 14 degrees at 18 knots. It's going to give you a bird's eye view of the aircraft while it's in flight. You can see the A320 uh, is not a large aircraft by any means. It's uh, very popular for uh, city hopping, basically, from one city to another, commuter flights. Five, three, five, climb and maintain flight level two, four, zero. 
As the uh, livery on the aircraft uh, says, the uh, Panda was the first to take delivery of the uh, A320 Neo. And that uh, paint scheme reflects that. I'm going to hop back into the cockpit here before we get uh, too cold. <laughs> We'll keep heading up to 26,000 feet. I'll uh, let the aircraft go until we get to cruising altitude. As you can see outside, the uh, terrain is quite mountainous in this part of the world. Aircraft is equipped with an onboard GPS system, and uh, just to give you an idea of our flight plan here, this is us right here. We're going to be flying northeast towards uh, home in Italy. Athens Center, Cessna, November 9er 2864, with you. Pacifica 19er 89er. Left heading 135, Cessna November 92864, Athens Center, Roger, altimeter 29891. Turn left heading 135, Pacifica 19er 89er. As I stated earlier, uh, aircraft flying above 18,000 feet use a standard uh, barometric pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury. I just set the altimeter there so that. Uh, We'll be uh, at the right altitude when we get to 26,000 feet. You can see the barometric pressure right here. Just a quick tour of the dash here. There's quite a bit to it actually. Uh, this is your indicated airspeed and your Mach number, which I'm going to change right now. World travel 1030, descend and maintain 13000. Descend and maintain 13000. World travel 1030. I'm going to keep it at Mach 0.75. Uh, we got a bit of a headwind here, 33 knots, so uh, we got a good ground speed, 444 knots. Getting back to the tour of the, uh, the instruments, uh, this is a primary flight display. 
or PFT, artificial horizon. This is used more so uh, at night or in bad weather. It uh, gives the pilots the uh, ability to know which way is up and which way is down. Believe it or not, you can lose your uh, situational awareness if you can't see outside. You have no visual reference. And a lot of uh, crashes have happened that way where pilots lose their uh, situational awareness and they end up uh, going into an upside down configuration and RC planes aren't designed to do that. So going through the cockpit here, this is your uh, compass. We're doing a heading of 297 degrees. Over here, this is your uh, multi-function display. Uh, from left to right, this is the uh, instrument landing approach system. Uh, this is the uh, VOR display. Uh, this is the navigational display. Uh, the arc display. And the flight plan. Seasoned pilots will refer to that as an MFD or multifunction display. Over to the right here, you have their uh, engine status. You can see both engines are at 80% uh, N1 or 80% thrust. You can turn the uh, seatbelt sign off. We've got the de-icers going here, and this is our uh, time, current time, we're flying uh, in real time, and uh, currently uh, 9.30 a.m. local time, and we have uh, 32,500 pounds of fuel on board, this is our flaps indication. Of course, this here is the uh, autopilot. This is your vertical speed, your altitude hold, auto throttle enable, autopilot master switch, your heading hold, your nav hold. Right now, I'm locked on with the uh, flight plan I've logged. This is your uh, APPR. Uh, use the lock on to the uh, landing approach when you're landing. Back course, you're landing on a back course runway. And of course, your airspeed. Over here, we have the uh, range. You can adjust the range of the uh, distance shown on the multifunction display. These switches here, your GPS, of course, and your flight director. And this is your barometric pressure, your course. Master warning light and caution lights. we got a uh, lane off to the right. It's a good time to demonstrate the radar. You can see on the uh, radar screen right here, I have a plane off on my right. He's uh, 3,000 feet above me. He's flashing yellow, so that means we're able to see him. There he is right there. Okay, so that aircraft was uh, pretty close to us in terms of distance. He was just 3,000 feet above us, so he was no threat. But, uh, 
They don't get very much time to look at them when they're flying in the opposite direction they're flying in. Of course, this is a uh, very busy corridor here, so uh, there is quite a bit of traffic on this route. You can see the traffic coming in on the radar here. coming in our left flying up yellow. Flying 50 degrees at 14 knots. Indicated airspeed 316 knots with ground speed of 438 knots. And the outside air temperature is minus 39 degrees Celsius. seeing anything in the way of uh, thunderstorms in the area, but uh, if this cloud cover persists, we may have uh, a VFR, I'm sorry, IFR approach to uh, near the airport. I'll check with in with you a little bit later on. We have a ways to go yet. Uh, we're still looking at uh, approximately 45 minutes to landing, give or take. So I'll check back with you uh, 
We're about 30 minutes away from the airport. Okay, so we're doing our uh, video here. We're currently uh, 128 nautical miles from Rome. Should be getting instructions for descent very soon. Weather inside is set. Uh, currently cloudy. Winds are uh, 281 degrees at 27 knots. You can see uh, if you look at the multi function display here, I've uh, already programmed in the uh, VOR for the airport. Given that I'm only uh, flying at 26,000 feet, and we'll probably fly a little closer to the airport before we begin our descent. Currently uh, 98, I'm sorry, 96 nautical miles from Rome.
Okay, so we just got our uh, instructions to begin our descent here. We're descending to 14,000 feet. I've set the indicated airspeed on the uh, autopilot to 230 knots just to make sure the air engines are down to idle speed. We're descending at 1,500 feet per minute. Sign runway two five. It's a relatively short, by the way, but long enough for this aircraft. in the area. Pretty rugged terrain here uh, just south of Rome. But, uh, I believe once we get into Rome uh, the terrain kind of flattens out a little bit. Rome is kind of like a, a bowl that's uh, in a dust flat plane. Currently uh, 61 nautical miles from the runway. I'm going to turn off the GPS here and switch over to navigation mode. And set our course for the uh, runway heading 250.
Okay, so looking at our multifunction display, this is our VOR. We're practically heading straight towards the airport. Obviously, we're probably going to have to make a right-hand turn here at some point. This is the uh, direction of the runway. There is an NDB on this airport, so I'm just going to enable that as well, just to have one extra form of navigation. I hardly ever use NDBs. Uh, they don't have a lot of range, 60 nautical miles. The other disadvantage of the NDB is it doesn't show you the distance to the airport, it just shows you the direction. In this case, it's more of a backup for the VOR than anything else. On the multifunction display, the uh, NDB shows up as the blue arrow. Looking at our lower ICAST screen here, and uh, you can see we got 28,000 pounds of fuel remaining. We are below our maximum landing weight, so that won't be an issue. This aircraft bleeds off speed rather nicely, you don't, you don't have to use any uh, spoilers or anything as in other aircraft. So we've just uh, been assigned 7,100 feet, which is an indication we're going to be mountainous terrain. Otherwise, if we're flat land, uh, we'd be assigned uh, an altitude of an even thousand. Anytime you see an altitude with a 100 or 200 or 300, it indicates uh, mountainous terrain.
nearest competitor to the uh, A320neo would be the uh, Boeing 737, obviously. And the uh, Boeing 737-400 would probably be close equivalent to the A320. The A321, when it's stretched fuselage, uh, is more similar to the uh, 737-800 series. Okay, so we're uh, under 10,000 feet here. I'm going to turn, out the, turn on the landing lights and see belts. Anticipated right hand turn heading to three four zero. Donza six eight zero one turn right heading zero one zero. Now turning to zero one zero. Turn right heading zero one zero. Lift on that six eight zero one. Indicated airspeed is two hundred and forty one knots. We're all below the 250 knot limit. Parametric pressure is 29.88 inches of mercury. We use parametric pressure to uh, calibrate the altimeter. Basically heading uh, northwest, and the uh, runway is uh, west southwest. So we're going to have a relatively hard left turn here. Vector's to final approach. Turn left, heading 275, descend and maintain 3000, cleared ILS, runway 25, approach, maintain 3000 until established. Tower on 127. You can see the uh, lift on localizer on the uh, instrument landing system is active. Approach, landmark 8, 7, we haven't picked up the guys, but we're getting closer to the airport. 
Might get a good look at the uh, Vatican coming in over Rome here as we uh, descend, provided the visibility is good. Drop the uh, landing gear here to uh, help create some drag, reduce our airspeed. We do have three greens. So if you look uh, over just to the, to the right of the uh, windshield here, you'll see the uh, Vatican. A little bit difficult to see yet, we're not quite close enough, but. Uh, we get a better view as we get even a little closer. Okay, so uh, there's the Vatican right here. Looks like we uh, locked on to the uh, IOS system. And the uh, leading edge flaps on the uh, wings deployed. up for final approach. I've armed the air brakes to automatically deploy on a touchdown to help uh, slow the aircraft. Winds are 226 at 9 knots. And we got a good view of the uh, city of Rome. There's the Vatican coming into view there now. Very nice view of the Vatican. 2500. So now that we're on final approach, I'm going to reduce the airspeed down to 155 knots. Bleeding out some airspeed. Wisconsin six eight zero one cleared to land. Runway two five. See the flaps are fully deployed, 40 degrees. What 
locked onto the glide scope. One thousand. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. Minimums fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. You can see the spoilers are deployed. Thrusters are on. Kind of a bumpy runway here.
And there we are at the gate. We're going to sh shut down our aircraft engines. Turn off the uh, navigation radios, FMC, transponders. Turn off all the lights, the icers. Seatbelt sign, fuel tank heaters, generators, avionics bus, and main battery. Okay, so there you have the uh, A320 Neo. And we're currently parked on the uh, ground at Fiumi Airport in Rome, Italy. Just reading the uh, writing on the side of the aircraft there, uh, first to fly A320 Neo, less noise, less fuel, less CO2. Those are the main uh, selling points for the uh, CFM LEAP engines. These are, they burn a lot cleaner. Okay, so that ends our video for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, look forward to bringing you some, some more videos in the future. If you have any comments or any questions, feel free to uh, comment either on YouTube here or uh, I also run a blog on Steemit. Have a wonderful day.